the Digital Dental Academy podcast, sponsored by 360 Visualize. Hello everybody, welcome uh, back to IDDA podcast. This is going to be our third podcast today. We have a very special guest from the United States, August de Oliveira. Those of you who haven't met him, he's the world's leading authority on 3D printing. August, how did you get involved in 3D printing? <laughs> well, I mean, like you guys, um, I have a CIRAC machine. I've used a CIRAC. Um, one thing that's interesting about CIRAC is we've been looking at this object on a screen forever. So the aspect of getting something off of the screen and actually being able to hold it is kind of a cool thing. And um, really what got me excited about 3D printing was uh, printing my own guides. So I saw a lot of guys on Facebook um, using the Robox printer, the Form 2 printer, and making their own surgical guides for about $5 as opposed to $300 that we were paying. Um, so I asked my buddy, you know, what's a good printer to buy? And he said, buy the Form 2. So I bought the Form 2. And uh, just like Adam over here, you get hooked pretty quick when you start 3D printing and you print all sorts of crazy stuff. So that's how I got involved. Brilliant. And one of the biggest inspiration for us has been digital enamel. Those of you who haven't seen it, go on to digital enamel and have a look at... Um, that's Todd's how I go in search with you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Todd and August has got, have got some amazing videos to help you uh, learn some workflows with your... Oh, with thank your you, thank you. Sarek? Say again, sorry. I say it's, it's some amazing workflows we've learned with Sarek yeah, from, I mean, from Todd and from uh, August. A more like a quicker version of, the, of, the, of a couple of the hands-on we've done today already. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're already. Um, they were on there, uh -huh. and it was me following those. And I think you know, it was about a year ago. I sent you a question about something. Yeah, um, and that was snowball from there, getting you over it, wasn't it? Yeah. Was well, it? hey, it worked. It worked. I'm here we're in here. London, so hey, that's uh, a. We're taking him. We're taking him on a tour through London as well. So we're, the prettiest places. We're going to do the pub crawl later on right. today. <laughs> it's going to be good. Yeah, all the pretty places. But yeah, you know, uh, digital enamel is a free site, so um, you don't need a login, you don't need a password. You just we've got videos on 3D printing, we have videos on uh, CIRAC workflow, uh, how to sterilize stuff, all sorts of uh, videos and cases up there. So check it out. And um, August is also one of the members on the IDDA. So please join the IDDA as well. There's a free membership on there as well. Everybody's very welcome, including nurses, hygienists, all dental staff and all auxiliaries as well. Yeah. I think cool. the IDDA has moved well. We have a good connection with you guys. With, oh, yeah. With over in America. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, some of the people you've talked about today. Um, Corey Glenn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Christian Brands, uh, Jonathan Abenheim. Uh, all sorts of fun internet personalities are on the IDDA. Yeah. Growing very quickly as yeah. well. It's good to take on. Where, where do you think things are going to go with 3D printing? Well, I think that we're going to get better resins. Um, I think the one thing that everyone is waiting on is being able to print our own aligners. So currently the way it works is we print a model, we use a pressure former, we cut the aligner off, we polish it, lots of little steps. So I think the, the most exciting thing will be the direct printing of aligners. Uh, digital dentures are hot. Um, I, in my opinion, uh, with the resins we have, we're not there yet, but we're getting better resins. Uh, actually, Nextent uh, just released their microfilled hybrid composite, uh, which will be able to print crowns, uh, although probably not super strong crowns, but definitely temporary crowns. Yeah. That's an exciting area. Um, being able to print metal is something that everyone's waiting for. Being able to print zirconia is another thing. So I think what you'll just see is over the next year or two more and more materials to use. Do you, know and do you think the technologies will change a lot in the next oh, few yeah. years? Yeah, I think uh, what we printed with a year ago um, is very different now. So the printers are going to get better, cheaper, higher resolution, um, and definitely different options. Be on the lookout for uh, SLS type printers or selective laser sintering printers that print with powder so we don't have supports, we don't have messy cleanup. I think that's where things are going to go. Do you know one of the things that I was, well, just the one thing that I thought I'm going to definitely get when I get back home, uh -huh. and it's not even related to dentistry today. What is that? The wood reel for the robot. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. going to print some wood. You get to print with wood. Yeah. I mean, how cool is that? To print, print with wood. There's some bad jokes that I might throw. Oh, I know, I know. Right <laughs> <laughs> it gives me a woody. It's how friend the audience, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All right. Hey, so the, the, I think the guys watching this at home might um, find interesting, which I, I wrote down in your presentation this morning was um, the precision but resolution. Can you explain that? Oh yeah, yeah, good point. So right now there's a lot of misinformation in the 3D printing world. Different companies want you to buy their printer. And there's some honest companies out there and some dishonest companies. And so when we talk about combing machines or even 
PA x-rays, we talk about resolution. And we know that in those cases, resolution is how small pixels are. And so we would think that when we talk about printers and we ask what's the resolution of the printer, it's actually not what we think. So in 3D printing, the resolution is how fat the layers are. And so a 3D printed object is built up layer by layer. And so some printer companies will say that they have a resolution of 20 microns. And if you think to yourself, 20 microns, that's awesome, right? All that's saying is that the motor that moves the build plate up and down can move it in 20 micron increments. A $250,000 Stratasys printer will print with a resolution of 20 microns, but also a $100 Amazon printer will print with a resolution of 20 microns. It means nothing. And so what you really should be looking at is XY resolution, or they call it precision. So uh, the XY is really the limiting factor in resolution. Form 2 has an XY of 150 microns. Uh, the Moonray S is 100 microns. Um, some of the higher end lab printers um, can actually come down to 20 microns. And so that, the XY value is what you really want to concentrate on. And do you think the um, SLS printers are going to be a lot more accurate? Well, I think that um, the SLS printer is definitely a workhorse for dentistry. Um, I don't know how small they can get that laser spot size. There's one called the Moai, which is an, an SLA type printer um, that has a laser spot size of 67 microns. Uh, but I think that going forward in the future, um, probably DLP will be the way to go. And the big difference between the two technologies is laser cures point by point, but DLP print, uh, prints layer by layer. And so with DLP, um, our resolution can be a lot better, our XY resolution, but the speed is three times as fast. So I think that more printers you'll see in the future are moving away from SLA and moving towards DLP. Not to say the Form 2 is not an excellent workhorse printer for dentistry, because what we need it for is Invisalign or aligner type models, night guards, and surgical guides. It does it beautifully. And so it's a very easy to use and a very accurate printer for what we need. Easy yeah. to swap over all the trays. And yeah, the yeah, the cartridges Lots and the software is very easy. So it's very dentist and staff friendly. Yeah. It's a very exciting time to be in dentistry. Things are just going to be evolving rapidly. And I think the important thing is uh, as a dentist for ourselves, we really need to be equipped for that. Learning the workflows, a lot of the software that you can get is free. So definitely you need to start using the software, learning um, how to manipulate everything on it and then move to the next step of buying your 3D printer and going on the courses to learn how to actually use all these different um, devices and, and technologies that are going to improve our lives. I think as well we want to get with the IDDA without just keep going yes. on about that. With the, you know, we're talking about with the guidelines and protocols. Mm -hmm. Just honest advice with things like you, yeah. the digital enamel with things with the, um, the reality of 3D printing for yeah. the consumer mm -hmm. so that they know what's actually going on. So it's not con you know, the company led. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. We we all tell it like it is, and uh, yeah. if we like something, we say something. If we don't like something, we also say that too. So, August, thank right. you very much for thank joining you. us today on the podcast. Yeah, thank uh, you. We're gonna quick one today. We'll have to get get back to the get course. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank, thank you so much. All right. Great. Great pleasure having you. All right. Yeah.